I really don't know how to describe this flavor, but all I can tell you is really flipping good. Herby, vibrant freshness. It all works really well together and that color just looks delicious. It's like a bit of a mind boggling thing. So you look at it, you think maybe pistachio. I mean, you taste it and you get like almost pesto running through your head, but sweet. It tastes so good. I can't describe how good this is. You've got to try and make this. Mm. It's the height of summer. And as I step into my kitchen garden, I'm greeted by the mesmerizing sight of abundant produce in full bloom. The air in my greenhouse is filled with the sweet scent of ripening tomatoes and the fragrant basil. The lush tomato vines are laden with plump fruits at the moment and they're hanging, waiting to be picked. Whilst the cucumber tendrils are reaching out in every direction with long, heavy fruits dancing in mid-air. My zucchini and pumpkin vines are overflowing, they're cascading down the hill and there's some ginormous squashes hidden amongst the leaves. Summer's embrace has transformed my kitchen garden into a haven of abundance. Welcome back to the garden. We're in the middle of summer, so there's so much to show you. And I need to tell you what the hell I've been doing with all the produce that I've managed to grow. It's been a crazy year full of different ever-changing weathers one minute sun one minute rain we've had all seasons in one it's been crazy but as you can see i'm building up my little basket here we've been growing some lovely stuff so let me show you around up until recently this bed was full of potatoes and potatoes they're so easy to grow but the first thing i had to do when i harvested this bed of potatoes was make this most incredible just impromptu crushed potato dish Oh, look at these potatoes. Lovely Welsh new potatoes. They're a little bigger than new potatoes, but they're gonna be sweet and delicious. They're gonna have a really nice thin skin on them. Oh, yes. Perfect for steaming, boiling, roasting, frying. You can do pretty much anything with this type of potato. I'm gonna pick some of the nice juicy potatoes. Juicy? Can potatoes be juicy? I don't know, but Let's pick some nice potatoes that we can really smash and create a beautiful surface area. So when they're roasting for the second time, they crispen up. So to make my double baked, crispy, smashed new potatoes, get them into a roasting tray and drizzle over some olive oil plus a sprinkle of sea salt. Bang them in the oven for around 25 minutes or until they're golden. Oh my word. These look phenomenal. I'm going to smash them up now with this jar. It's so satisfying. When you crush them, you just break through that crisp skin. Oh yeah. Before these go back in the oven to crisp them up, I'm gonna pick some garden herbs, some thyme, some sage, even some lavender flowers and some rosemary just broken over the top. Then get the smashed potatoes back into the oven to crispen up and go deliciously golden. As soon as those herbs hit the hot skillet, they release so much of their aroma. The lavender is, will be game changing. Just a pinch more salt and a little olive oil and they're going back in. Oh yes! I can't even describe this sensation of the, the mouth feel because you've got this, well, maybe I can. You've got this super crunchy outer skin layer and then you've got this fluffy, light, cloud-like potato mash. It's so beautifully seasoned with the subtle smokiness and the herbiness. Mm. Guys, are potatoes just probably like the food that most of us just can't live without. What an incredible invention potatoes are. Absolutely delightful. 
The rest of the potatoes that I harvested, I just put in a paper bag and popped in the fridge, but you can even just store them in your shed or something like that, or garage, they'll keep for ages. But straight away, I put this bed to use. I put more potatoes in, and that's what you can see growing here right now. They've already sprung up. We've got also things like chard, swede, and some watermelon radishes in here, and carrots too. I sowed them straight after harvesting the potatoes because I never want a bed laying empty. This bed you all remember had all my garlic in and I harvested it recently. I grew about 70 bulbs of garlic. I let it dry for a few days, braided it up, not very well if I'm honest, and now it's hanging under my stairs, drying out, and it'll be good to use for at least nine months. And I'll use that same garlic to grow more garlic this year. But I'm gonna do a whole detailed video on how to grow garlic that will include some incredible garlic recipes, plus how to use garlic medicinally too. This video is kindly sponsored by Ritual. And one of the reasons I'm working with Ritual is because the founder Kat's story has really resonated with me. When Kat was pregnant with her first child, she turned her house upside down to get rid of any products with ingredients she couldn't get behind. She replaced everything from cleaning products to deodorant, and when she was looking for a prenatal multivitamin, she also found questionable ingredients. She couldn't find a multivitamin she trusted, so she started her own company, Ritual. In terms of the products that I use day to day, I'm on a similar path to make sure the products I use are good for me. So the attractive thing with Ritual is that you know where the labeled ingredients come from and why they are there. If you're wondering whether or not to take a multivitamin, the main thing to remember is this. No matter how well you eat or what kind of diet you follow, it can be difficult to meet all the nutrient needs from just food alone all of the time. So I've been taking Rituals Essential for Men now for about the last year. Prior to that, I was taking a handful of different vitamins from B12 to Omega-3, but having Rituals Essential for Men, it just makes it so much more convenient for me. So along with my whole foods plant-based diet, I have peace of mind knowing my body's getting the vitamins it needs. The multivitamins are totally vegan friendly and they use this clever, smart, delayed release capsule design, very sciencey, that basically um, allows the nutrients to absorb into your system better and not upset your stomach. There's an array of multivitamins to suit your age and gender. They're non-GMO, clean and easy to take. Ritual are kindly giving you guys 30% off your first month. All you have to do is go to their website and use code GAZ30 or click the link below this video and it'll take you directly there. Ritual, thank you so much for sponsoring the video, making such incredible multivitamins that I use every day. A few weeks back, I harvested all my field beans that were growing in here in this bed for about nine months. I sat on the stairs after picking my field beans and popped the lovely beans out of their pods and put them in a container. I've just popped them in my freezer. I'm gonna eat them over the course of the next few months uh, as and when to get that taste of summer. We've had an amazing few weeks here actually. Had so many lovely guests. Ben Van Heems from Groved, Hugh Richards. We went to Charles Dowden's garden. Also had Adam Jones from Adam and He came by as well. It's so nice because there's some lovely Welsh gardeners around here. I've got to tell you about first thing, this basil. I have loads of basil and I was trying to think of ways in which I could use it up over the course of the last few weeks. It's not in the best of conditions now, but when it was, I made a basil ice cream, believe it or not. It was the most refreshing, delicious ice cream I've ever eaten. So why not show you the recipe? Mm. Prepare to be pleasantly surprised by this whimsical and refreshing herby ice cream. It's a vibrant green delight that playfully showcases the aromatic punch of basil in the most creamy, refreshing ice cream. To make my basil ice cream, of course, we're gonna need some fresh, vibrant green basil. Add it to a blender and add some milk, plus some corn flour. This corn flour is gonna help the ice cream really thicken up and go deliciously creamy. Blitz it all up until super smooth. Now that is the kind of deep, rich green color I wanted. Now this is a dairy and egg-free ice cream, but to get that creaminess and that richness, I'm gonna be using some full-fat coconut milk. And for sweetness, I'm using some maple syrup. Let's get that heating up in my saucepan with some vanilla bean pods. Now let that infuse for a few minutes before pouring in that lovely basil milk mixture through a sieve though, just to get rid of any bits that may be in there. 
Let this mix infuse and thicken up for around 10 minutes, but don't boil it, just lightly simmer it. Look at the beautiful color on that. I'm just gonna pass this through a sieve one more time to get rid of any chunks of vanilla and that pod. Now let's get this in the fridge to cool down completely before we get it into the ice cream machine and churn until thick and creamy. I really don't know how to describe this flavor, but all I can tell you is really flipping good. Herby, vibrant freshness. It all works really well together and that color just looks delicious. It's like a bit of a mind boggling thing. So you look at it, you think maybe pistachio. And then you taste it and you get like almost pesto running through your head, but sweet. It tastes so good. I can't describe how good this is. You've got to try and make this. Oh, the smile brings back memories of that ice cream. I think I need to make that again. Oh, it's so delicious and aromatic. This greenhouse is uh, booming right now. Look at these juicy tomatoes. They are beefsteak tomatoes I've got growing here. And I've been helping myself to tomatoes over the last few weeks. And it's just such a delight. They're so fragrant and fresh. Eat them right off the plant. Uh, absolutely delicious. Guys, look at my cucumbers. You would have remembered me planting those just only two months ago and they're just now everywhere. It's not just, they're not just hanging, they're just sprawling all over the floor as well. And I've been picking quite a few of these. Absolutely delicious. I think I'm actually gonna pick this giant one on camera for you right now and give it a taste. Oh, it's actually heavy. And this variety of cucumber is called Market Moor. It's got these weird prickles on it that you need to just scrape off. You can do it with anything. They come off so easily. But once you've gone past that prickly boundary, inside is the most juicy, refreshing cucumber ever. I'm gonna cut this open now. Oh yes, look at that. This is probably on here too long. So I've actually waited to harvest this when I was filming to show you guys. But Mmm, absolutely delicious. No, no bitterness, it's actually sweet. Yes, I grew a cucumber. <laughs> Before I leave the greenhouse, gotta show you my peppers. I've got some lovely pepper varieties and they're starting to fruit. Well, they are fruiting now. I'm waiting for them to ripen up. I really wanna grow some hot, hot peppers. Sowed these seeds back in February. So it's February 2023 and I've got some fiery chili seeds to plant today. And I've got a really unusual method of growing the chilies that I learned from a channel on YouTube called Dr. Obi's Garden. So I'm gonna follow Dr. Obi's technique and that is using banana peel. He germinated his seeds actually on banana peel. We've got beautiful insects in here, ladybirds, bees, oh, it's everything's going on right now. And I got the most incredible aubergines growing. I made the most mind blowing recipe recently with the aubergine that you're gonna see soon. I can't, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. Look at this. <laughs> Guys, look at this. This is a way to celebrate my first aubergine. Look at my courgettes, just producing and producing and producing. I have one in my basket already. I cannot pick these fast enough. So I've been making beautiful recipes. Obviously in a previous video, I made stuffed Italian style, crispy fried courgettes, absolutely mind-blowingly delicious. And then recently, drawing more inspiration from Italy, I made a lovely risotto. So I've got my onions, gonna get some garlic too, chopped really fine and then sauteing down gently in a little olive oil until they're lovely and golden. Is there anything better than garlic and onions sauteing? 
add a pinch of salt to help this break down. Yes, the onions and the garlic, they're releasing all of their sweetness right now. I'm gonna add my risotto rice. I'm actually gonna stir that for a few minutes. I wanna sort of toast the rice a little bit. It's gonna release the nuttiness, the flavor that's a lot with inside it before it's glazing with some beautiful white wine. We will let that white wine cook out, bubble away for a few minutes before adding some vegetable stock. Let that risotto rice absorb those beautiful flavors of the onion, the garlic, the wine, and the veg stock. I was always told as a young chef, you're not really supposed to stir a risotto, but everybody does it. But I think just to not annoy any Italians, I'm gonna slowly rotate and circulate the pan over the heat. Oh man, making risotto, simple dish, something that you can put your love into because you have to give it constant attention. Because if you were to go away and make a cup of tea or put some stuff on the washing line, you come back and all the, the liquids have been absorbed. So this is, I like this kind of food. It's like a date night food. You're gonna be in the kitchen on a Saturday evening, cooking up your risotto before your date arrives for a lovely romantic dinner. What about that? I need someone to do that for. Is anyone out there? Is anyone out there? Just sheep and cows. When the liquid is started to reduce down and disappear, you need to add more stock quickly because it will quickly catch if you're not careful. So my beautiful zucchini, these smell so fragrant. And this is the first time I've ever grown the yellow ones and I definitely will continue to grow the yellow ones because they look like a piece of art really. So what I'm gonna do is finely chop these into rounds and then get them sauteed in gently in some olive oil. I'm also gonna throw in some of the onion tops, chopped really fine as well, with the lid on, because I want them to sort of release some of their juices. That's gonna really infuse nicely into the risotto, because I'm gonna add half of the cooked zucchini into risotto and use the rest of them to top the risotto. Risotto is nearly there. I need to just take that bite away from the rice. In a few minutes, the courgettes will be cooked down. I'll stir through some herbs from the garden, some thyme and some sage. Plus, I'm actually gonna add some miso paste. Now this is a bit weird, but the umami strength and power that that holds will help elevate this risotto to have the most tangy, punchy, luxurious, rich flavor. So half goes into my risotto, half I'm using to top the risotto with. Now there's definitely a mouthful of lovely caramelized homegrown courgette with every mouthful, but to take this to the next level, I'm gonna stir through some chopped up courgette flour that I'm gonna pick now. Plus I've got some homemade Parmesan that I'm gonna sprinkle into this. I just made it by blitzing up some nutritional yeast with some toasted almonds and a little garlic granules. Guys, it's time. Let's serve this up. Some more of this lovely courgette. All right, a bit of this flour on top too. Beautiful color it has. And finally, we've got to have a bit of pepper at the end. Look at this. A simple risotto, but when you're picking the veg just before it, it makes all the difference. Let's taste. Mmm. Mmm. Summer on a plate. Mmm. That risotto was so good. The squashes and the pumpkins here are just taking over. It's magnificent. This, there's a squash so big in there that I think I'll be able to move into it in a few weeks time. But we also have my lovely corn doing well. I've just got to shake it now to try and release some of the pollen. That will then stick to the hairs to hopefully produce some really good bountiful corn on the cobs. Oh, so that's a bit of a tour for you. Hope you enjoy the recipes. It's not over for me at all. I've got, I'm still planting things out. 
things like French beans. Uh, beans are so important for my diet, I eat them all the time. So the more I can get, the better. So I'm gonna put these out now and hopefully have some lovely beans and more recipes to show you in the near future. Ah, look at that life. It's been a pleasure being in the garden with you again. I hope I've encouraged you to cook or to grow. I've got some tutorials on growing, more recipes, more garden stuff, more outdoor cooking coming up soon. So stay tuned. Please subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can get a cookbook off the website or a piece of merch. And uh, I'll see you on all the other socials too. I don't know why I did a sign off like that. We're never that serious, but you know what I mean. Thanks for watching, guys. It's been just over three years since I released my last cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen. It's been a while since I made a new cookbook and the reason is because I've been going through some huge lifestyle changes. I've been learning a lot about myself and finding some new hobbies such as moving to the country and learning to grow my own food. And that will sure be the topic of my next cookbook, I, I, I hope, if I'm lucky enough to get a new um, book deal. We'll see. But I just wanted to bring your attention back to this book, Plants Only Kitchen, because it's a book that I am still so proud of. It's not necessarily the same sort of style of cooking that I do day to day now, but it is super delicious meals. They're simple meals. That's why I made this book. So I wanted to show people that plants, plants only cooking can be really simple too. They're also protein packed meals too, because I love my working out and I love my gym. I still to, do to this day. And I still do cook recipes from this book. So I just wanted to let you know that if you want to get a copy, I'm doing a discount on my website for actually signed copies. My mum is amazing. She will send them to you wherever you are in the world. And that's the best way to support the channel and everything that we do um, is getting them through my website rather than, you know, other Amazons and things like that. So if you want to support, this is the best way to support. And if you do, I really, really do appreciate it. It means we can continue to make epic videos on YouTube and content on social media. And if you've already got copies of my cookbooks and you've bought them from the website, thank you so much. I hope they're serving you well in the kitchens. It means the world when I see you um, sharing images on social media of recipes that you've made from the book. And if you wanna get a copy, you really wanna support the channel, then you can use code GAZ10 Plants Only Kitchen, Gaz 10 Plants Only Kitchen for 10% off my website. And that's the best place to get it from to really support. And you get a signed copy and my mum sends it to you. <laughs>